Okay, so Can anyway, speaking agree? of Yamahas in the 250 class, I've got Jeremy Martin followed by Justin Cooper, and then I'm going out on a limb here, and I'm going with my guy Garrett Marchbanks. I don't know if you guys seen him. He hasn't really got into an outdoor series healthy, but he's fast. If he can just get some somewhat decent starts, he's going to surprise some people. And I know he's a little bit big, but that Yamaha runs good, and that club, the Club MX bike. I don't know why, but I feel like it works better outdoors. He's been practicing with Phil Nicoletti and some of these guys on 450s, and he's giving them all they want. So, yeah, but that team just doesn't have the money, like the star racing Yamaha does. It's true, but you know as well as anyone in motocross, sometimes you can make up a little bit, and I think he's he's in a position where he might do that. I'm not saying he's going to win, but I think he could be there. He's going to be there at times. He's going to be there consistently, and I think I, I pick him for third overall in points. You know, one and two. Star Yamaha, without a doubt. Jeremy Martin, I don't know how anyone would go anyone but Jeremy Martin right now. I mean, he's so good outdoors. He's a two-time champion. Probably should have been three or four considering, you know, what he's been through. But, yeah. And then Justin Cooper, because he always gets starts. He's fast outdoors. I just don't think he has the, the tenacity to fight with Martin the whole way. So, what say you, Coach? What's your top three? I'm going to sound like a real pansy here. I've got, a, I've got two scenarios. I think if Jeremy Martin's shoulder – you know, he comes in and he's able to keep that thing glued together for the summer. I don't think anybody can touch him. So I have an, if nobody gets injured, because the top two guys I have are coming in with some injuries. I've got J Mart at the top. I've got Forkner at second and I've got Hunter Lawrence at third. Now, if J Mart's shoulders blow out and Forkner does what Forkner does, I'm looking at Hunter Lawrence, Jet Lawrence and Colt Nichols for the top three. So if those two guys stay healthy at the top, I think they'll be hard to beat. I mean, we've got history to show it. They're both very competitive, but I just don't know that we're going to be able to see that. Um, I, so you got I Hunter one, Jet two. Told, say it again. Hunter one, Jet two, Colt three. If 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 Forkner and J Mark go out with injuries, I've got Hunter one, I've got Jet two, and I've got Colt Nichols as three. Um, the the big the big concern I have is. And I've said it over and over again. I just don't think the how the Honda power plant's going to be able to stay up against those those four or five star Yamahas. Um, you know, Jeremy Martin did a great job. If you watch him, he knew he was down on horsepower and he chased Ferrandis around. He did a great job of not getting stuck in the inside lines. He carried as much momentum as he could to try to keep that Honda competitive, but he just ran out of horsepower. And I've talked to Jeremy a couple of times. I said, "What's that horsepower difference compared to your Honda?" And he said, "Like night and day." So did you hear that, Johnny? I mean, Jeremy's all of like 90 pounds. Yeah. But think about it. Where I'm concerned is then you've got Hunter and Jet on that downed horsepower. You got J Mark going to that extra horsepower. That's why I have to give the nod to J Mark. I have to give the nod to Forkner because he's fast as heck if he stays off the ground. Um, We could talk about it if you guys want to go there. There's all these guys, all the Star Yamaha guys, Sands, um, Thrasher, all of them, are their deals are up at the end of the year. So they're all wanting a 450. So that Star Yamaha camp is, there's a lot of pit bulls in that fight. I don't, you know, look at Hunter and Jet. They probably can do pretty well. If K-Rox taps out, you got Jets going straight to K-Rox position. Hands down, no question asked, fast track. Where does that leave Hunter? You know, that's that's where I think Bobby Hewitt's team would have come in and played a significant role, but we can talk about that later. But on the subject of 250s, I think the horsepower disadvantage is going to be difficult for the Honda guys. But I do think that if J Mart and Forkner go out, I see the Lawrence brothers coming in and I see Colt Nichols getting right into the mix. You don't you don't have Justin Cooper in your top three, huh? Mm-mm. I don't think he's too much of a head case. Fair he's, enough. When look at look at the season. Like if he was feeling good. He's like on fire. He reminds me a lot of uh, um, Justin Hill. I mean, the, the guy can haul ass. Like you said, good starts. He could be up there. But if the wind's not blowing right and his puppy's not healthy, sorry, Johnny, he just, he just you know, he doesn't have his puppy to bring up on the podium. He's he's all butt hurt. He's but you think, case. you don't think Forkner's a head case? Oh, I do. I do. That's why I'm saying he's so wishy-washy. I think if he's, if he keeps his shit together, you can't count Forkner out. I mean, outdoors, he's banging bars and all that. And I do believe he's going to come in fresher than everybody else because everybody on Cowie raced all year long, Supercross. And I think that's going to work to the advantage. We can talk about 450s last week. 
You've got Osborne coming in fresh. You've got a couple guys that are going to be fresh AC versus the guys that have gone the grind. Johnny, you talk about it all the time. It's a long ass season and half the battles just staying healthy through the season. Short little. Yeah, it's, it's too long. It's too yeah. long. So that's why I have to give Forkner a nod on the Cowie team. I have to give the Lawrence brothers. They're down on horsepower. And then you've got J Mart who's out. He's fresh. He's hungry. There's no, but I, I think people have amnesia in our sport. You got to remember when J Mart was riding for Honda and he got that chance at Daytona, he was supposed to get that next 450 ride, but then he breaks his back with Cooper and that contract got ripped. So can you imagine just being on that cusp of that sweet contract? And just like that, it was gone. And now he's on struggle bus to get back. And now he's got four guys on the team that are all hauling the mail. You got two of them that just won an East and a West. And they're all fighting for that 450 because, you know, Christian Craig's gone at the end of this year. He's already riding a 450 outdoors anyways. Christian doesn't want to stay on 250 again. So you've got all those star Yamaha guys with the exception of Seth, uh, Seth Hamaker and um, who else would be on the team that's young. You know, Seth's got another year, year on his contract. So there's three guys fighting at Cowie. The Lawrence brothers at Honda are content. It's going to that, that's gonna be a Donnybrook out of that star tent for sure. Hopper, what about you? It seems like the Weed Whackers got it covered. Uh, what's what's your top three? My in, man? In, in, in the 250 class, yes. Okay, a small little tangent here. Um, I, I don't understand how so many guys are like in the 250 class forever, where I know the rule is something like three years, 135 points. But it, well, it's out, not outdoors, good. For there's the sport. no regulations. I can be a it's career 250 guy outdoors. Yeah. Okay. Well, then that totally defeats the purpose of what I was going to say here. Maybe the, the 250 guys just need to get paid more. But anyway, uh, brain fart here. Jeremy Martin, I think, is going to win it just because that's it'd be hard to bet against him. Um, I think Jet Lawrence is going to be second. And then I would have to say the other Yamaha, I'd have to say Cooper. But I would like to see the Nash down to like maybe 10 races. I, I thought COVID did a really good job with the amount of races to help try to keep these guys healthy. You wouldn't have so many fill-ins and potentially losing rides to people if these guys didn't have so many races and so many potential for injury. I think the Supercross should almost be 10 races too. I think 17 is too much. I would but totally agree. Go. Hey, Johnny, if you don't mind me asking, what makes you think that Jet will do better than Hunter, considering they're on the same equipment when we go outdoors? I mean, I guess the question is, why don't you think he'd do better? Um, if you put him back to back, I mean, Hunter's already been in the sport. I didn't mean to cut you off, Rob. Or he's already been racing the Nationals for a while, and he's come up short like every time. And Jet's come up, and even though he supposedly – Hunter's the faster of the brothers. Jet has proven the other. He's he's done the 180. I think Jet's quite a bit faster than Hunter. See, that's where I think it's interesting. You know, Hunter, unfortunately, has been injured since he got here. So he hasn't really had a successful season. I look at how he moved his way up through Supercross, which I don't think is his specialty. That's why I think I have to give him the nod with his MXGP background. And, you know, like you said, the only reason why Jed even got here was because of the deal, it, you know, with them being a team deal, you get Hunter, you get Jet. Um, obviously, like you said, Johnny, the momentum has changed quite a bit. As Lance Armstrong says, momentum has changed zip codes. And I do believe that, you know, Jet is a better rider indoors. He's, he's much smoother, as Chris has said last week. The thing that I'm curious about is I think it seems like they've got the Hondas where they both seem to be riding them very well. I mean, they took and did in Supercross what I didn't think they'd be able to do on a Honda, especially on the East-West shootout. You know, you could argue that maybe Cooper rode conservative when he got a shitty start or whatever. I get all that. But I think when you look at the fact that Hunter's shaking down that Honda, he's been able to prove even in Supercross, which is not his forte, he's right there clipping on Jet's heels. And then I think when we go outside, I think you're going to see Hunter do an absolute beatdown on Jet. Family bragging rights, big brother, little brother. I think it'll be interesting. Hunter Box says that his brother beats him in the season points, no matter if it's fifth place or 10th place. 
you know, cook You've got the, Jed over Hunter. Wanted to. Yeah, I, one second. Yep. I gotta, my Jed's. dog is driving me crazy. She's needs to get tucked in. Give her one second. You guys want to chat? Two fifties. I gotta take her real quick. <laughs> she's kind of an ass. Did, did he just say she's got to get tucked in? You got a hundred. We were bucks. just talking. You've got Jed above Hunter at the end of the season, no matter where, whether it's 15th and 16th, it's going to be Jed above Hunter. Yes. Yep. Yep. You, you, you want to take that bet? I'll take I the bet. Hunter bucks. Fair. Okay. 100 bucks. Okay. Cool. 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 Yep. It's going to be a nice dinner. I can already know where I'm going with it right That's now. That's it. So Chris, Yo. Johnny, and I, Johnny and I just uh, laid a bet down. He's got Jet finishing in front of Hunter, no matter where in the series, 15th and 16th, 19th and 20th. We got a hundred bucks and he's already got the, he's already got his dinner location picked out. Oh, Johnny, I'd like to get in on this. I'll take Hunter. So you, you think Jet's going to beat Hunter and I, I no, not, not he just laid hundred bucks on the line, Chris. I would like to take it, but I don't want to, he's going to, he's going to owe you a hundred bucks. He's got a baby on the way, new house. I don't want to take his money. So I'll, I'll let you take it coach. You know, <laughs> everybody in the comments, let me know that you're on Jet's side. Hopper's going to make the money. And coach is going to have to pay Hopper. I, I like it. Hashtag coach pay Hopper. Hopper. You did, did you not you remember what, Hunter winning two years ago outdoors before he got hurt and all the stuff he's done in the, the GPs? I mean, I get it. Lawrence Jet Jet is a better supercross rider, but outdoors, that's Hunter's jam, dude. I Well, then again, I'm the guy that picked him to win last year and he didn't exactly win. So I don't know. We well, will see. And, Only and time will tell. What's that, Johnny? Only time will tell. Well, and that's what Chris and I said last week. We get three rounds in. All of our predictions could be absolute piles of poop. I mean, it could just change so fast. I mean, all it <laughs> takes is one DNF or, you know, something crazy. And like you said, March Banks could come out with two wins and you could have, you know, Colt Nichols right on his heels and shit. You could have McAdoo that's on fire. I mean, <laughs> we could be just sitting here going, we didn't see those guys coming. And that's what makes these preseason predictions so difficult. Well, and what about Max Voland? I mean, there's so many good guys from one to 15 or, or even to 20 that, especially in the 250 class, a guy gets a little bit of confidence and he can just become a guy overnight. Just there he is. So 